What's up, everybody? This is Cameron Davis, and you are watching and listening to The Carmen Davis Show. What's tea, bitch? Welcome back on in. Come on and sit down. Let's talk. You know, so much shit going on, and you knew I was going to run off about it. You know I'm going to run off about it. Like, it's it's just way too much shit going on, right? And I, I, I have been trying. I told y'all this beginning of the season, I was going to be nice, and I was going to try to be kinder. People have been calling me Carmine for the last couple of seasons and it hurts. I'm not a mean person, you know? So I'm like, okay, well maybe I will, I guess, choose to use my platform to show my best self, even though I kind of thought I was, you know, but you know, I believe in, we got to keep it real so we can heal. So we're going to talk about it. You already know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to touch on it. We're going to get there. Before we do, make sure you guys subscribe right and review this podcast. I don't do it for my health. Okay, smash that subscribe button. Smash that follow button. Five stars because I am a five-star bitch, okay? And um, let's get into it before we do. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Um, thank you guys for helping me meet my amazing therapist, Phil. You know, I speak to him every week. Tuesday, like clockwork, and um, he has changed my life and made me a complete, um, I feel like I said, I feel like he makes me a super saiyan, right? And he has helped me creatively become the person that I want to be because I stopped comparing myself to others. And I know that it's a common thing to do is get on Instagram, scroll, compare yourself to people left and right, you know, and I think, I think the Lord for um, a tool like betterhelp.com to match you with a therapist. And I believe it can happen for you. Now, remember, you can also log on, find your own therapist through the filters. I have one that was pro LGBTQ, um, who, um, have dealt with identity crisis and um, imposter syndrome and all those things. You can go through the list of things and like you choose your race, um, religious, faith-based, and all that, and they'll match you with um, a list of therapists, and you choose your therapist, and then when you meet one, it's sort of like a date almost, like a tender moment, you know, you can unmatch at any time with a therapist, with no additional charge, so that's awesome, and um, eventually you'll find one that you're connected to, and I've been connected to my Phil for years, (laughs) and I tell him everything, so um, again, shout out to BetterHelp. Um, remember to try your first month for 10% off at betterhelp.com slash Carmine Davis. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Carmine Davis. Try it out. All right. And with no, without further ado, let's get into the show. Um, you knew what I'm going to talk about. Okay. From lovyscott.com, shots fired at Donald Trump rally in Pennsylvania. He apparently got shot in the ear. So Donald Trump appeared to be shot in the ear as shots were fired at the former president at a rally in Pennsylvania. Trump had blood on the side of his ear and on the side of his head and inside of his ear. Um, If you've just been living on a rock and had no idea what was going on, Trump is currently safe and expected to survive, according to two senior law enforcement officials briefed on the matter. He had blood on the side of his ear and the side of his head. Trump was speaking when he reached for the side of his face as popping sounds rang out, rang out all over the rally. He then crouched down as Secret Service agents rushed the stage and surrounded him. He was quickly escorted into a vehicle, walking off the stage with agents on all sides. Reporters on the scene saw smoke and heard that what they initially thought were fireworks before everyone ducked and law enforcement encircled Trump. Screams from the audience rang out the scene, rang out as the scene unfolded. A Secret Service spokesperson said in a statement posted on X that the former president is safe. This is now an active Secret Service investigation, and further information will be released when available. Agency spokesperson Anthony Giglomi posted. Uh, Trump spokesperson Stephen Chong said that the former president thanks law enforcement and first responder for their quick action during this heinous act. He is fine and is being checked out at a local medical facility, Chong said. More details will follow. It is unclear if a suspect is in custody. Okay, so this was dropped on the on the 13th. So today, two days later, we've gotten so much more details. And I want to um, 
touch on those things and give you guys what we got going on now. Okay, I had questions like everybody else. I saw this stuff and I wasn't totally sure. It, it gave SNL skit or it gave, um, you know how we love Tyler Perry, right? But you know, Tyler Perry is really good for creating shows that are kind of corn. And sometimes the acting, although we love a lot of the actors, some of them are questionable in the way they come across on the screen. And that's what that gave me. He, it gave me bad actor, it gave me bad script. I didn't really believe what was going on. I didn't think that it was a real situation. And I think majority of us agree. It looked fake as fuck. It, it looked fake, it was crazy. So I think a lot of some details have come out since then. One that I think I saw that in an article that it was glass that had gotten to his ear from the podium. So a bullet never really even grazed his face. I could tell by the slight, like the, the cuts on his face. And then there were two victims of the shooting who had died, which I had questions about. Um, because even if you, okay, so one, if a, who would have the nerve to scale a building, right? And there's video footage of this man scaling the building, sitting up there eating Skittles and sunflower seeds, waiting on the right moment to strike, right? So for someone who has Secret Service, former president, you know, he has that for the rest of his life. He's at a rally. I happen to know, I felt during a lot of situations where the government and law enforcement were involved. I felt like I couldn't make a certain move without someone watching what I'm doing, let alone, I've never been in the presence of Secret Service. So I happen to know Secret Service watches for everything. They sweep everything, you know, before he could even step into the room. So, or step into the podium. So how was he, this person in direct eyesight of Trump, shoot a rifle at him that sounded like fireworks, right? and miss his head t entirely. And it looked like he didn't shoot anybody in the stands. But now they're saying that, this is according to BBC, who are the Trump rally shooting victims? An attempt to assassinate former US President Donald Trump at a rally in Pennsylvania has left one bystander dead and two seriously injured. Trump suffered an upper ear injury, but was otherwise unharmed, later telling reporters that if he had moved his head slightly, he would have been hit in the head. Okay. Three other men who are attending the rally on 13th of July were not so lucky. Here is what we know about them. Um, Corey Comfortor, um, he, the 50 year old volunteer fire chief died while trying to protect his family during the attempt assassination, attempt assassination, diving into, onto them to shield them from the bullets. Corey died a hero, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, Josh Shapiro said at the news conference following the shooting, adding that Comprator went to church every Sunday and loved his community. Most especially, Corey loved his family, said Mr. Shapario. More, Mr. Comprator's daughter, Allison, later wrote on social media about how her father had thrown her and her mother onto the ground and shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He truly loves us enough to take a real bullet for us, and I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. Allison described her father as the best dad a girl could ever ask for and said he could take, talk, and make friends with anyone. This feels like a terrible nightmare, but we know it's our painful reality, Mr. Compton's daughter Dawn wrote on Facebook. He was said to be an avid Trump supporter and to have been excited to attend the Pennsylvania rally where he was later killed. God bless him and his family. Um, David Dutch. Mr. Dutch is from a Pennsylvania city of New Ken Kensington and is a longtime employee of the technology company Siemens, according to his sister. Jennifer Very Grazier told the New York Times that the 57-year-old suffered damage to his liver and broken ribs in the shooting and has had to have more than one operation. She described him as a longtime Trump supporter. He was exercising his rights and went to the rally and he didn't deserve any of this. You know, I'm with you on that one. You know, there's a lot of times where uh, people are exercising their rights and they get shot by rubber bullets, you know, 
um, arrested and all those things. Like mostly, you know, especially being nonviolent, mostly like um, 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 rallies that we had in the marches that I attended to attended. And if you go back to the FUBU saga um, in season one, when we touched on that. Yeah. So a lot of people are come to these rallies and try to support and exercise their right to rally and are met with severe, severe, severe bodily injuries. They're arrested and all those things. Normally, it's the opposite. It's not from a random shooter. It's from law enforcement. So I completely understand how hurt or how crazy it is when you're going to exercise your rights and rally behind um, a cause that you support and are, is met with violence. So God bless these families. So, um, the next one, James Copenhaver, Mr. Copenhaver, 74, is from Moon Township, Pennsylvania, and was registered dem a registered Democrat at the New York Times reports. Albert Quay, a supervisor in Moon Township, told the newspaper that Mr. Copenhaver was retired and had become very interested in local politics. Mr. Copenhaver is listed as a member of the Mount Moon Township's Military Banner Committee, which organizes tributes for the area's veterans. What was wrong with him? I guess he was injured in the process. It doesn't say here where, how, and where he was injured or to what degree. I mean, I guess they're, they're, he could have gotten a scrape on the ground from hearing the fireworks in the distance so, and, and falling. Like, it, it doesn't say anything. But God bless him and his family. Um, but it's all fishy. Um, what's next is apparently Trump um, is going to make an announcement and reveal his um, running mate contender in his next um, speech. Was supposed to be tonight, um, which is Monday. God bless everybody that's involved. Um, one of the things that I did not like and I wanted to speak on and touch on is that this in no way, shape, or fashion makes him more appealing to me as an African-American because he has been shot at or allegedly shot at or um, there's been a lot of violence regarding him. I don't think a lot of black people, most black people I know have never been shot at. And any one of them um, who have been don't romanticize it and say to themselves, this is who I'm going to run for because he gets shot and survived. Who might have worked for our rappers, you know, if he was signed a G unit, you know, something cool. Um, but no. No. And if it was, it's, it's, if it, it did appeal to someone of that stature or in the, that category, they probably were already going to vote for him anyway, or it probably can't even, sounds unintelligent and probably is not even registered to vote. So I'm going to move on. We'll, we'll keep going and we'll keep an eye on that story. As usual, we'll talk politics on the show. It's the best I could do to be unbiased as, as I could. God bless everybody involved. And we'll move on to the next hot topic. Um, leave a comment below. Do you think Trump, what the situation was staged, like people are saying? Do you think that just somehow a man could be, hyper, you know, talented to scale a wall and wait for the right moment, shoot a shot? And, and that's another thing too that, I, that stuck out to me was one thing is I don't know a lot about guns, but I know the difference between a firework sound and a rifle and a gun. And the fact that you could tell everybody's reaction in that place, it it did not give a gun sound. Now, I wasn't there. And the fact that only one person died, his face was grazed, and we're not even sure if it was a bullet wound to his face. It looked like something sharp. That doesn't look like a gun blast. It looks like something sliced him. And then this man was worried about his shoes. What kind of shoes were they? 
That's what I want to know. The gay in me wants to know what kind of shoes was Trump wearing. What kind of shoe was Trump wearing? Thank you, Jay. Tell below if you know, what kind of shoe was it to the point where you could just only wonder after being shot at, where's my shoe? They have to be nice, right? Maybe like pass down, maybe lucky shoes. You know, there are certain shoes that you kind of wear for certain occasions, like, you know, I mean, about Martin, I don't know. Trump once was a very rich man, so they probably were pricey. Italian? Leave a comment below. And we're going to move on. Um, but before we do, guys, make sure you guys smash that bell button. Um, subscribe to this podcast. You won't miss a moment if you're not one of those weird one percenters that are subscribing and listening every week and not subscribing because you don't want to show love, show me some love, honey. You know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys follow us on all of our socials, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis Show, uh, Twitter.com slash at Carmine Davis, TikTok.com slash at Carmine Davis, and uh, Facebook.com slash Carmine Davis, at Carmine Davis everywhere. We're going to move on. Oh, pause. I'll shout out. I want a moment of silence for my girl, Shannon Doherty. You know, the Beverly Hills 90210 star and Charm star died. She was 53 with her battle of cancer. That's my girl. I grew up on Charmed. I love Charm. I actually, this is a weird confession. I actually used to, every time, every episode, I would write down everything that they would say about like demons and stuff like that. And I would <laughs> write it down in a book and I kept a binder of it, of every little thing that they said. Like I had my own book of shadows. Weird. And it probably is not helping those allegations of me and like witchcraft and shit like that, but it's the truth. So she's, she's my, and she was my favorite charm one besides Piper. Prue was my favorite. I understood her because I was the oldest and I loved how stoic she was. And so, and I loved everything about Shannon Doherty after charm. She did not fuck with them girls. Like she gave them a business. And when she came around, she meant business. But then it seemed like she was really, um, friendly like she had friends like with Sarah Michelle Geller, who I love she was really close friends with but when it came to charm to that whole situation she was strictly busy with them girls and I appreciate that so I like to have a moment of silence for Shannon Doherty God bless her and her family Okay, um, the next hot topic from lovebescott.com. Wiz Khalifa hit with illegal drug possession charge in Romania following festival performance. Wiz Khalifa has been charged with illegal drug possession after performing at the Beach Please, at the Beach Please Festival at the Black Sea Coast in Romania. Okay, we're gonna all collectively, like, I want us to let out a, <gasps> you know. <sighs> now, you know, I love Wiz. He is fine. He's so sexy. I love how what kind of father he is. He look looks like those kids look like they are loved upon, honey. Um, so but I mean, come on. During a performance at a musical festival held in the resort of Costin Costin Sydney. <laughs> come on, I mean, God, like, I don't even know why y'all fuck with me. Y'all know I, I think part of the the allure of watching the show. Is how many words can I fuck up? Okay. Constanesti. The accused was found to have possessed more than 18 grams of cannabis and to have consumed on stage another quantity in the form of handmade of a handmade cigarette. Said the Romanian anti-organized crime prosecutors. 
uh, in a statement on Sunday per the AFP. In Romania, cannabis is considered a risk drug. Possession of the substance can be punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Videos of the black and yellow rapper smoking on stage are circulated on social media, as well as a separate clip of him being escorted from the venue by the police. Last night's show was amazing. I didn't mean any disrespect to the country of Romania by lighting up on stage. Wiz wrote on his ex account Sunday morning. They were very respectful and let me go. I'll be back soon. But without that, big ass join next time. The source also confirmed to the AFP that Khalifa, along with others, were taken in for question early on Sunday. The rapper was charged but not kept in custody. An investigation into the matter is reportedly going on. Um, in recent months, Khalifa told Skinbone that he smokes up to 30 blunts a, in a day. Jesus Christ! During an interview with Call Her Daddy's Alice Cooper, the rapper also confessed he shows up to his son's parent-teacher conferences while under the influence of marijuana. Rapper and athletes need to learn to leave the cannabis at home when traveling overseas. It's just not worth it. Well, you know, here's my here's my thing. Now, I have worked in the restaurant industry for years, right? And there are people who I would not want to work with who are not under the influence. I don't want anything to do with them. I don't want anything. I don't want any parts of them. And I noticed that their skill level has gone down. I'm also a creator. So I do know that sometimes people, to get the best out of them, they have to have another brain, you know, another side of their brain going. And marijuana helps them lock, lock into that type of um, brain. Like, it, it, it's almost, okay, my thing is caffeine. You know, I used to love a five-hour. I used to love, you know, um, a Red Bull here and there. Of course, I stopped, you know, because of, you know, baby, I want to live. But <laughs> uh, I think it's a little bit different because it's plant-based. So it's it's just how caffeine gets me up and gets me going. Marijuana does that, but it's natural. And I feel like sometimes people can think clearer. They probably are able to handle uh, situations like a parent-teacher conference better under the influence, are able to be able to deal with things that are caused normally are blocks like anxiety causes blocks for them they don't have those things so they're able to handle have a higher bandwidth for certain things and certain um um tasks they're able just to think clearly get it done and get 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 through it so i'm 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 not against marijuana use i'm hey if it it doesn't work for me i need to be you know, grooving. I need my coffee. I need my espresso. Best than me espresso. You know, I need, I need something like that to get me going. I need, you know, I don't need. That's it. I don't do drugs, little bitch. I, don't, you know, I don't do coke. I don't even do Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? But caffeine is my thing. I like a little, and I don't drink it anymore. I'm off caffeine. I don't even drink sweet tea. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. And I have noticed. That's why I also go to therapy twice a week to. <laughs> to get through those anxious blocks and you know i've substituted that and i don't think caffeine is a healthy so i don't think ca caffeine is probably even the best example of what marijuana means to some people i think it does bring out the best in certain people and there's not that much of a health risk in marijuana use you know i mean wiz got the money that's why he confessed it go and pay them little people and whatever go about your business Leave a comment below if you understand where I'm coming from. Any marijuana users who might have started later in life, about their life before marijuana use, did it unlock certain things for you? To me, it made my situation worse. But everything ain't for everybody. People got to get that through their head as well. That's first and foremost. What's good for the goose ain't always good for the gander. You don't have to light up because Wiz did. You might even sit over here with me. <laughs> Shit, and drink an espresso martini. Um, but let's move on to the next hot topic. Before we do, guys, make sure you guys subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I don't do it for my health. Smash that follow button. Give me five stars. I am a five star bitch. Okay. Thumbs up this video um, and follow us on all of our socials. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis Show. Um, TikTok.com slash at Carmine Davis. Twitter.com slash Carmine Davis. Facebook.com slash Carmine Davis. And let's get into the last hot topic. Okay. From lovelyscott.com, Julia Fox quits project after five years due to director's alleged, uh, the director's allegedly racist opinions. 
I like her. She's a mess. I, I love everything about Julia Fox. Ever since this whole Kanye thing, I think I saw her on Z-Way one time. And I've loved, I fell in love with Julia Fox. I think she is one of the white girls that I would hang out with. And I feel like she's 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 funny, but she's real at the same time. So Julia Fox is speaking out after quitting a project she's been working on for quite some time. The 34-year-old uncut gym actress took to her TikTok to address an allegedly racist conversation that led to her to drop the project, which she says she'd been a part of for five years. Okay, so the, this craziest, this, so the craziest thing just happened to me, she began. So I've been attached to a project for five years. I've given creative contributions to it, emotionally co emotional contributions to it. It was like my baby. I even brought like a major, major A-list icon to play alongside me and everything was going great until this white man director came in she went in to explain that the white male director who she doesn't name was trying to kick me off the project meanwhile i've been there for five years and he's been there for a week i had mentioned to him that i really thought it was an important to have diversity in our lead cast which apparently rubbed him the wrong way he said hey he said why why people have it really hard too and plus diversity casting is like using black people as puppets meanwhile we're actors we're all fucking puppets that's what we're talking what what are you talking about she said while reading from notes she said she took during the call white people don't have a duty to cast black people because so many black projects happen in asian projects and nobody gets mad that there's no white people in that cast he said Turn on Netflix, turn on any streamer. It's all black projects. Go to India. All the movies in India have all Indian people. Nobody gets mad that they don't have diversity. I said, honey, white people have been the default up until now. Let them have their all their all Indian movies. To which she ale he allegedly said, what are you talking about? Wake up. We're in 2024. This is in 2005 or something. It was giving Proud Boy. It was giving All Lives Matters. It was giving white supremacy. And at that point, I was done arguing. She said, "As and I said, you know what? I can't work with you. I'm done. Julia went on to say she's grown to love the people attached, the producers, the writers, and the other actors in question. And I don't want to blow up this whole thing for them. But I just can't believe I'm having a conversation like this in 2024. It's not known which project she was referring to, nor the director. Um, we're going to watch her. Okay, so the craziest thing just happened to me. And I like am looking for validation on this because I just feel like I'm being gaslit at such an insane scale. I took notes. So... I've been attached to a project for five years. I've really, you know, given creative contributions to it, emotional contributions to it. It was like my baby. Um, I even brought on like a major, major A-list um, icon to play alongside me. And everything was going great until this white man director came in. Um, and, um, let's just say our first phone call didn't go very well i thought it went well but i guess it didn't go well for him and he was trying to kick me off the project meanwhile i've been there for five years he's been there for a week so we have a second call and on the first call i had mentioned that i really thought it was important to have diversity in our cast in our lead cast and i took notes because he said why white people have it really hard too and plus, diversity casting is like using black people as puppets. Meanwhile, we're actors. We're all fucking puppets. What are you talking about? Anyway, white people don't have a duty to cast black people because so many black projects happen and Asian projects. And nobody gets mad that there's no white people in the cast. He said, turn on Netflix. Turn on any streamer. It's all black projects. <sighs> Go to India. All the movies in India have all Indian people. Nobody gets mad that they don't have diversity. And I said, honey, white people have been the default up until now, okay? Let them have their all Indian movies. Like, then he said, what are you talking about? Wake up. We are in 2024. This isn't 2005 or something. So 
So I guess, according to him, racism is a thing of the past. It was giving proud boy. It was giving all lives matter. It was giving white supremacy. And at that point, I was done arguing. And I said, you know what? I can't work with you. I'm done. I'm pulling out of this project. Good luck. Um, but unfortunately, I have very strong beliefs. And these are things that I will not compromise on. Then I said that white people have a duty to include minority groups into our projects because we have opportunities handed to us so much more easily. He said that wasn't true. They don't. He was saying that he has had a hard time. And he's probably had a hard time because of his shitty fucking personality. Anyway, yeah, I'll probably out him at some point, but obviously, you know, I've grown to love the people attached, the producers, the writers, the other actor in question, and I don't want to, like, blow up this whole thing for them, but I just can't believe I'm having conversations like this. Um, in 2024, I'm just so heartbroken. I'm so appalled. I feel so gaslit. Um, yeah. Anyway, you live and you learn. I'd like to add another anecdote because of me insisting to have diversity in our lead cast he said it felt like you wanted to be the director or something and in that moment he really showed not just his racism but also his misogyny because i didn't tap dance for him i didn't do the little pleasantries i didn't do the oh, i love your movies his movies suck um I just, you know, we'd been on the project for five years. I just wanted it to get made at that point, you know. Um, and I was being very direct with him in the things that I thought we needed in order to make this movie amazing for all groups of people to be able to enjoy. And he just completely sucked the life out of it. Um, I think he's a covert narcissist because he does not present himself in this way. He's actually very docile and sweet, seemingly. Um, and that's why I almost prefer, like, macho kind of guys. Because at least they're not fucking pretending, you know? With these covert, covert like, feminine guys, they're the worst. Anyway. Yep. That's where I'm at. Share your thoughts in the comments. Okay, so here's my thing, right? You know, initially when I heard about this, like, I like Julia. And I have never 110% not believed her stories. Um, but I also know she's funny and she's sarcastic and she she boasts a little bit. So, but watching her tell the story and even with my own experiences working close to white and hetero men is that they... Do you remember that, that part in Barbie where... Ken was talking to the men in the real world and he was like, oh, so we're no more patriarchal bullshit or whatever. And they were like, oh no, it's still a real thing. We're just better off at concealing it. It's true. Like that's, a, that's an actual fact. That's why it's so funny because nowadays it's so covert and it's so under the nose. And it's, it's just met with gas light. Like it's, it's met with, you know, why, you know, oh, I have it. We're all in this together you know, kind of thing, or, you know, let's, let's not bring race in it at all. If we're going to not look at race, let's not bring it in at all. Or it's a, oh, I've had a tough too, you know, and, and, and oh, I've had a, a rough life as well. If you can, if, first of all, that is a sign of racism. We're not comparing what you've gone through, um, the little shit that you've gone through to a whole factually like these these are marginalized groups it is just what it is you know you can go to and get a loan you know with, and write confidently that you're white and not have to worry it probably we could have the same credit score the same history and all those things and because you're white you are going into that maybe approved category with i could have a better credit score and i'm going to be 
No, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's marginalized. Like we are a technical marginalized group. So us having our own things is called um, resource gathering. We have to go have our things. We have to have our movies. We have to make our own movies. We have to make our own um, art if we want it want us to be seen because if it was up to you, we would not be seen because <laughs> you think in some weird way we have it equal and we don't. And if the proof is in the fact that if it was up to you, the chance that you get a chance to be diverse, you would choose not to because that is, you would choose to marginalize us. That's racism. So there, the fact that she brought that opportunity up allegedly to this director and he, it was met with like pushback is proof that there is pushback. So let's start there, you know. Um, and then two, uh, I want her to expose him. I want her to just go ahead and expose him. Just go ahead. You know, this is to me, being an ally is a full-time job. It is a, it's a risk that you take. If you want to talk that talk, you got to walk that walk, right? Nowadays, I am happy that there are a lot of, especially white women who choose to be an ally for the gay community, the black community, the, you know, the Asian community, all these marginalized groups, right? And they want to speak up. They're walking off sets. They're choosing to speak up for us. But that is like one out of 10. You know, a lot of them are talking about the nasty things that, that were said to them or that I looked at the director and I was disgusted by what they said to me about women. But bitch, did you walk off the set? Choosing to take that pay cut and, and choosing your to stick up for a marginalized group. Is, and women are a marginalized group as well. So choosing to stick up for yourself and choosing not to laugh it off is talking and talking and walking a while. And that is an important part of being an ally. That is the part of being an ally. We don't want to, I don't want you to get a bumper sticker. I don't want you to put stickers on your book or your laptop um, about how Black Lives Matter when you're met with some a uh, seeing something and you're not doing something, right? It just don't, whatever you got to tell yourself to go to sleep at night. If you are seeing someone being mistreated and you don't stick up for them and are willing to put yourself in their shoes or in the way of their attack or in, you're not an ally. As an ally, you have to be able to risk what you, the platform that you're sitting on the platform that you most of the time like is a privilege to be in and stick up for the rest of the group, the marginalized group. You have to speak up. So I applaud Julie Fox for quitting. Um, could this be some something that she's doing on TikTok to go viral? I mean, maybe. Because she didn't expose them. Like, I think what was the point of saying that that was true or not? She said she needed validation from the people that she did the right thing. I mean, if why do you need validation from people to doing the right thing if you're doing the right thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a conversation that you have with your team, your, you know, whatever. But you hop it on TikTok. That's it. <laughs> I applaud if this really happened, I applaud Julia Fox. But my question is, girl, you know, you don't have friends. No one you could go and sit at, you know, dinner with at nice guys or whatever and over your rich ass life and talk about how you stood up and and sit with them and ask make sure that they don't do the right thing. Why hop on TikTok? Whatever. But people do weird shit like this all the time. So it's almost like those people who feed the homeless and make sure that they have three cameras on them while they do it. It's weird. But leave a comment below if you understand where I'm coming from. Um, and that's the show. Before we go on, make sure you guys subscribe for this podcast. Um, follow us on our socials, Instagram.com slash Carmen Davis, Instagram.com slash Carmen Davis show, TikTok.com slash at Carmen Davis, Twitter.com slash at Carmen Davis. I love you guys. I'll see y'all next week.